So, Andrew Gomez, he wrote a week ago, Hi, good afternoon. I want to see if there's a chance to recreate stonebrewing.com's blog page in Webflow. Thanks. And I took a look at it. And thanks again, Andrew Gomez. So I took a look at their blog page. And yeah, it's pretty cool. It's You have the latest one that's... Like a, let's see here, probably a two by two. It's taking up two by two, two columns, two rows. And then you have this that is uh, one by two, and then one by one, one by one. And then all the other ones just go one by one in a, in a four column row. All right. So uh, how would you do this in Webflow? I will show you that right now. HG is back. Junio is back. Yes. Welcome. All right. You j got here just in time. We're starting the tutorial right now. Blank page. No collections. Nothing. We're starting from scratch. Here we go. So how would you do that type of design? So first I would create the collection. So we're going to go to collections, create one, and let's just take a template. We'll just do blog posts. Super simple. All right, blog posts, create collection, and we'll add 20 I sample items. Let it run. Do, 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 and there we go. BCA is back in the chat room. Welcome back. All right, and then, oh wait, I have to turn on this. Boop. Okay, and turn this on, all right. Okay, so we have our blog posts. And if uh, you look inside of each blog post, it's just lorem ipsum, stock photos, random colors, All right? Cool. So now that we're done creating our collection, let's start designing the page. Okay, so here's how I would tackle it. Now, some of you might have a different way. If so, when I'm done with this tutorial, please, Tell me the more modern way, because maybe this is old school already. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Uh, first, I'm going to add a section, and in the section, I'm going to add a div block. Okay, so we have the section and a div block, and this div block, I'm going to call it container. And the container, I'm going to set a max width of 1140 with a... Uh, Margin auto on both sides, so that centers it. There we go. And because I don't want this to be hitting the very top, let's just add some padding to the top just right now of this section. And now in here, here's the trick, okay? We're going to add one, two, three. We're going to add four collections, okay? And so the first collection is going to be for the first one. The second collection is going to be the second one. The third is going to be the third and fourth blog posts. And the fourth is going to be all the other blog posts. All right. So let's add a grid. All right. So we have a grid. Let's remove the gaps right here. So I'm going to lock it down and say the gap here on columns and rows is going to be zero. And we're done with our grid. No, we're not. We need a four column grid. My apologies. There we go. So a four column grid. And let's see here. So the first blog post is going to go in here. The second one's going to go in here, third and fourth. So that means we need another row for all the other blog posts. And they're going to go in here. OK. And done. All right, let's drag in a collection list for our first blog post. So I'm going to go here, double click to connect to a collection, blog posts. Now we don't want all of the blog posts. We just want one. We want the most latest one to go in here. So what I'm going to do is in the element settings right here, go scroll down and for limit items, I'm going to show only one and we're going to start at the first one. Okay. And press enter. There we go. Now I want this 
to span two columns in two rows. So I'm going to take this collection list wrapper right here. And now we have this handle, this blue handle. I'm going to drag it. And there we go. Now it takes up the whole spot. Now you might be thinking, okay, how come you have this line? Well, it's because I didn't really add any design to it. There's no CSS to this. So let's go ahead and start adding the CSS for this collection item. Actually, uh, let's see here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm, do I have to set a height? Uh, uh, okay, yeah, I think I have to set a height for all of these rows. Because if you look at this, I feel like they have all the same height. Each row has the same height. So I'm just going to throw a number out there. For 300, 400 for the height. Let's try it. So I'm going to edit the grid. And notice how all of these say auto. I can click on that and say 400 pixels. And that's the height of this row. Ooh, that seems too tall. Is it? Uh, 200? Okay, we'll say 200. And then I'll do the same thing for the second row, 200. And then for the last row, I'm going to say 200 as well. All right, that, that looks pretty good. Done. And now for this collection list wrapper, let's see here, where is this collection list? Okay, so the collection list wrapper, yeah, we need to set this to a, a height of 100%. Let me just double check. Let me set this to 100% as well. If this works, then I'll explain what's happening. Cool, it worked. All right, so whenever you put a height of 100%, what this means is that you're telling this div, hey, I want you to be 100% height of your parent. Now, if the parent of this element has a height set to auto, then this trick won't work. But since this has a height of 100%, it's also saying, hey, what's my parent's height? And this one has a 100%. And this is also saying, what's my parent's height? And so if I go to this grid and then go to this row, it's saying, oh, my height is 200 pixels. And so that's where the height is coming from. Obviously, this, this big box isn't 200 pixels. It's 400 but each row is 200. So 200 plus 200, boom, got it. All right, so that's how I get the height. And also if I'm missing any questions, don't worry, Jake will jot it down for me and I'll get to it later. All right, so we have these two. And let's go ahead and make a card design. So I'm going to Command E, let's put a link block and this link block we're gonna call it um, card and this will take up the whole width so I'm gonna do display block right here it takes up the whole width of the parent and then uh, the height 100% of its parent and let's go ahead and add some sort of background color to it mm, leave purple Cool. So we'll get that that color, and there we go. Oh wait, why am I putting color? I need a background image. Sorry. <laughs> Let me go here, and from this element settings panel, I can set a background image that pulls from the blog post collection. There we go. And then back on the styles panel, I can go ahead and uh, set the the background styles. So I'm going to set this to background, cover, center, no repeat. All right. And let's also put some text on top of this. So I'm going to make this flex. And when I make it flex, I want content to be on the bottom right. So the, uh, the text will be on the bottom right. 
but also I don't want the text to hit the very edge. So what I'm going to do is hold shift and change my padding. And there we go. And let's also change the color of the text to be white, no underline, and we'll give it a, a font size of 24 pixels and a line height of 1.3 dash. Let's add text inside. And this text will be pulled from the name of the blog post. And there we go, we have our first one done. And since we're just going to rinse and repeat this same design, we don't have to recreate it. We're just going to copy this collection list wrapper and paste it, okay? And now I can take this uh, collection list wrapper, the second one, and, this, and then just drag this as a two by one. And because I want this to start from the second blog post, I can right here. So this one's gonna start at two. Rinse and repeat for three and four. So copy paste. There we go. And here we, so this is going to, yeah, this takes up both. And now here's a trick. Like how do we make this two columns? Okay, how do we make it show two things? So I'm going to make this start at three, but show two items. Okay. And now for this, what I need to do is take this collection list. Sorry. I need to take this collection list and give it a style of grid so I can have that two column look. So I'm collection list, give it a combo class of two column. Give it a class of grid, or sorry, a display of grid. Set my gap to zero, zero. Remove that second row. And there we go. Now I'm looking at this and this these font sizes are way too big. So let me make this card and call it small. And let's make that smaller, like 18 pixels. There we go. Now, last thing I need to do is copy and paste this again. But this time for this collection list wrapper, I'm gonna drag that to four columns and I'm going to set this collection list to four columns. So let's duplicate this class and call it four call change the edit the grid to be four columns and then lastly we just start at number five and we show whatever's left so we're going to say the last 100. so let me add some padding to the bottom of this There we go. And we have our custom. Whoa, how come it's stopping there? Hold on. I think, oh, I gotta fix my grid style. Yeah, I didn't add my height to the auto-generated ones. So 200 pixels, the auto-generated rows. Uh, hello? Oh, I need to add a height to this. Oh, what? That's interesting. Okay, for each of these rows, I need to set a height of 200 pixels. There we go. And again, if I go too fast on any of these steps, please let me know. Uh, Ask a question and I don't mind answering it and going back to help you understand how to do this. Now I'm confused. What? Why is... Why? Why? <laughs> uh... Why does this section end here 
And this could... What? Oh, okay. So maybe this shouldn't even be in the grid. Let me throw this outside of the grid. So this grid, let's delete one. There we go. So what I did was... Let me see here. This section, yep, it goes all the way down. All right, so what was happening is this grid, I didn't need a third row. And because the third row was being set to 200 pixels, I was forcing this last collectionless wrapper to be only 200 pixels high. But because it's taller than 200 pixels, it was overflowing the end of the section. So the section was saying, hey, my children are only this tall, but then I have this one other ch child that is like going all over the place, but I'm going to ignore him or her. <laughs> so I made this child, it's um, a, a sibling of this grid rather than a child. And so now they're playing ni nicely because this has its own set of heights. Uh, rather, this one is um, has its own set of heights. So you can limit the items to one and you can do that as the first one. And this is what some people do too, if like you, you sort by like featured post first. And as you see here, there is a switch for is this featured? And you can sort by that and have the featured one showing up first. So for example, if I go like this, this one's featured. Actually, let's not make the first one featured. Let's make this one featured. So now we have 14 misconceptions is going to be featured. So what I'm going to do is save and say filter where is the feature set to on? Yes. And sort order should be featured on first. Oh, okay, so I guess that one's first. Okay. So this one is set to featured. And what's really cool because this uh, this main design is being used all everywhere. If I add like a little tag, like let's go ahead and make a little tag at the top right. So I'm gonna set this to relative. Let's make a little tag, text block, and say featured post. We'll set this to position absolute to the top right. Push it away from the top and bottom by like eight pixels, uh, all caps, and set this to like 12, give it some padding on all sides, a little bit more like that, give the background color of, it seems very Christmassy, mm, something like that round the edges by like three, and there you go. So this has a tag, this has a tag while others don't. And so people know that, hey, this is a featured post. Okay, cool. I don't know if it looks good there. Let's put it here. Okay, yeah. So something like that, you know? <laughs>